Good morning. Welcome to the vineyard. We're excited you guys showed up to worship the Lord. If you'll stand with us, we're going to, we are minus a drummer this morning. You've probably noticed by now and some of y'all may know why, some of you may not, but we're real excited giving a shout out to little Miss Sophie who was born this week. So yay. So Scott and his wife are up in College Station um, so if y'all would just keep the baby in, in prayer, they're just checking her out up there, and we'll just, hopefully we'll get our drummer back next week, but we're, we're okay with him being gone, because he's taking care of his little girl, so, yay. All right. <laughs> All right, well, let's worship the Lord. We're not afraid to say that we're needy. We're not ashamed to say that we're weak. We cry out because you are the remedy. You're the remedy for our disease. You are great. You are gracious. You are power, but you are patient. You've got kindness in your heart for folks like us you're a friend to the sinner you keep the losers you keep the winners you call them sons you call them daughters folks like us and we need you like a baby needs its mother's love yeah we like the morning needs a rising sun yeah we need you like the future needs tomorrow to come yeah we need you God yes we're not a say that we need we're not ashamed to say that we're weak we cry out because you are the remedy you're the remedy for our disease you are great you are gracious you are power but you are patient you've got kindness in your heart for folks like us and you're a friend to the sinner you keep the losers you keep the winners you call them sons you call them daughters folks like us and we need you like a baby needs its mother's love yeah we need you like the morning needs a rising sun yeah we need you like the future needs tomorrow to come yeah we need you God yes and we need you yeah we need you like a baby needs its mother's love yeah we need you like the morning a rising sun yeah we need you like the future needs tomorrow to come yeah we need you God yes and we need you yeah we need you God yes we need you yeah we need you God
God, your love meets my heart like a song And it echoes on and on Bitter cold, winter storm, your melody comes Sets my feet on the path Dropped your love in my heart like a stone And it ripples on and on Though the dark stretches far One thing I still hold That you Your love keeps my heart like a home It perfects me on and on In four places through the ages My story will tell Of a father whose love never fails My heart darkest place when death closes in all your promises oh, yes and amen to the fatherless your love rushes in all your promises oh, yes and amen in the darkest place when death closes in all your promises yes and amen to the fatherless your love rushes in all your promises yes and amen behind me before Many of you know the, the psalm. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I won't fear because you are with me. See, we have this idea sometimes that we go to these places and the Lord doesn't go with us. 
And I'm just here to tell you this morning that you can't go anywhere where he is not. God will accompany you all the way to the gates of hell. And he'll do everything to keep you from going inside. If you're here this morning and you need to know the comfort of the Holy Spirit, you are in the right place. He loves us. And he desires good things for us. And he wants us to know that the love that, that has taken us is powerful enough to overcome anything that stands in the way. All right? Just let that sink in this morning, if anything else. So, we miss Scott. His love is deep, His love is wide, covers us. His love is fierce, His love is strong, it's furious. His love is sweet, His love is wild, it's waking hearts to life.
is deep, His love is wide, it covers us. His love is fierce, His love is strong, it's furious. His love is sweet, His love is wild, it's waking hearts to life. His love is deep, His love is wide, it covers us. His love is fierce, His love is strong, it's furious. His love is sweet, His love is wild. It's waking hearts to life. Thank you. Thank you. Am I on? There you go. Well, welcome to the Vineyard, and uh, we're happy that you're here to, to worship with us. And if you're a first-timer... There is a Connect card in the chair pocket right in front of you. If you fill that out, we'd be happy to send you a gift in the mail. And if you're not a first-timer and things have changed or you have a prayer request, pull out that card, fill it out, and then drop it in the offering bag when it comes around. So the first announcement, don't go too far, Danelle, <laughs> is a night of creative contemplative worship for women on the 24th of February at 7 p.m., Sugarland Vineyard, and Danelle is here to tell us a little bit more about that. Here she comes. Card with him, real quick. Sorry about that. Um, Tammy is the lady who's going to be doing this. Is the creative arts director at um, the Duluth Vineyard, um, and the pastor and his wife of the the Duluth Vineyard are some amazing, amazing people. He's one who did the residency program that Joel and I were a part of um, this last year. He also heads up um, the Multiply Vineyard, which is the same as what Mike and Betty Fry do over in California. Anyways, great, great, solid church. So what they're doing is they're coming down to the Sugarland Vineyard. Um, it's being hosted by the One River Vineyard. So there's a number of vineyard churches that are going to be involved in this. And as far as I can understand, what this is, it's just an opportunity for women to come together and to um, do kind of what they call a visio divina, where I don't know if any of you have heard of lectio divina, which basically contemplating in the word of God. Well, this is more like contemplating God through the visual. So whether that's um, through art through dance, movement. I think that's what, I mean, from what I understand, from what they've told me, that's what this is going to be all about. But it's um, for women, so it's kind of a safe place for us to kind of express our creativity to the Lord in a way that's maybe not what we, most of us are used to doing. So um, if you're interested in going, there is a little bit of a cost. Um, if you want to go, please see me and let me know. There have been a couple of people who have already expressed an interest in going. We can do a carpool to go down there. It is Friday night, starts at 7, so we'll probably be leaving. Um, well, we're shooting to leave maybe about 5, but if there's some who want to go and you don't work during the day and we want to go earlier, we can do that too. So just come talk to me and see if you're, if you're interested. We'll, we'll figure out what we're going to do. All right, thanks. Thank you. So the next item is um, Winter Jam for the youth. It's coming up on March the 3rd, $10. And uh, we have a video on that, but as the video is getting prepared, if you're interested in going, see Richard and coordinate with him. And we're going to see the video. Old International presents New Songs 2017 Winter Jam Tour. Featuring Crowder. Brittany Cole. Death Avenue North. Sadie Robertson. Andy Minio. Dixon. You, I've been my through all of it. Thousand Foot Crutch. Hosted by 
by tour founders new song plus speaker to tony nolan also introducing free jam artists obp sarah reeves steven malcolm 10 bands 10 dollars at the door no tickets Yeah, it's too bad they don't have a section for adults. You know, we could sit in the back maybe and still pay ten dollars for that. That's awesome. So um, this is also going to be Richard's last event as the youth director. So he has, um, you know, prayerfully considered what his future is, and he is stepping down from that role. So this is the last, um, the last hurrah for Richard. So, but if you're interested in going, see Richard and give him your. Um, information that you want to go because there's a date and time when to, to leave for this event. March the 3rd, it's like 1 p.m. in the afternoon. It's going to be in Houston. Okay, well, moving on to food. Who likes food? Who likes food at the church? So we have a church potluck, and we're going to try to have um, a potluck for the church about every, I don't know, three or four times a year. So uh, it's always a good time to get together and share some recipes and so forth. So uh, maybe that, that uh, community group that's doing the recipes can really shine on this first potluck. So we're looking forward to that, March 26th. And then uh, the men's retreat, you know, we still have room available. There are people who are going who haven't quite signed up yet, and they need to put their name down because they kind of are magnets for others to join. Um, and uh, word is that Gander Mountain is going to file Chapter 11, so they have a big sale starting this week. So if you need some fishing poles, fishing reel, you know, all that stuff, Gander Mountain might be a good place to visit. And uh, we're going to have scholarships, so if, if any man wants to go but can't because uh, they're worried about the money, uh, we will be providing some scholarships. And if you're a guy who can't go, then maybe you consider giving a scholarship. So just think about that and, and see what the Lord would put on your heart for uh, helping those who might not be able to go otherwise to, to attend this event. Then uh, uh, early save the date. I know you women tend to book your calendars early. So this is going to be May 20th, a mother-daughter brunch. Uh, I'm not sure we've done one of these in a long, long time. So uh, we're trying to see if they have some interest in doing the mother-daughter brunch. For all of you who have daughters that are not in the church, um, I'm sure you'll be calling them up and saying, get over here and we'll go to this thing together. Uh, and it's grandmothers, daughters, granddaughters. So save the date and uh, look forward to having a good event then. If the ushers would come forward. All right, well, let's pray. Uh, Father, we thank you for today. We just thank you for this opportunity that we have to get together and to worship you. And um, we just pray that your hand will be upon the rest of the service as uh, Villard brings the message. We just pray that uh, you'll speak through him and, and their hearts will be touched. And we just pray for those who are unable to be here. And we think of Scott and Christina as they have the little baby Sophie. And we just pray that you would uh, have your hand uh, protection upon them and and um, just keep them safe. And we just um, pray for the others who are not able to be here for sickness, and we just pray that you, your hand will be on them and that uh, you'll be able to raise them up. We just thank you now for this opportunity that we have to give back to you, and we just pray that uh, you'll be used to expand your kingdom. In your name we pray, amen. So last week we talked about the newsletter that we want to start there is a sign-up in the foyer, so if you want to be on that distribution to keep up with what's going on in the church, make sure and put down your email address back in the, in the foyer. Like for, for those of you who live in Tennessee, you might want to keep up with what's going on here at the Vineyard. So uh, sign up, and the, we'll, we'll be happy to send it to you. With that, Villard, you're up. I was just thinking about going to that concert. You know what made me change my mind? I think you'll have to stand up the whole time. 
Oh. There's chairs? Okay, well, I'm going then, man. <laughs> you know, I was thinking about all you men that's going to go to the men's retreat. Um, that's really an important thing. I don't know if y'all know that, but it's hard to get men together. And uh, you need something like hunting hogs, and things like that. I mean, it, I'm hoping many of you will think about doing it. I was thinking about how could we get men to sign up for this. And here's, what, here's my conclusion. I thought, you know, if all of you women would uh, start making a, a honey-do list, uh, and I'd say start it right now. Start, you know, put about 10 things on there, like, you know, I need that bedroom painted. And, you know, and just start, the garden needs to be tilled. That's one that I'll have. And, and just start making a list. You get about 10 things on there, and just start talking about it with your husband. Uh, <laughs> and you'll be amazed how those men will sign up for this, this trip. <laughs> you can be a real promoter of getting this uh, off the ground and making it, making it happen. Uh, men are kind of, I don't know, something about men getting together is a powerful thing. First time I was introduced to that was, was that was, uh, what was that back there, men, uh, Anyway, I can't remember, way back there. Y'all remember those men's retreats we had? Uh, promise, keepers. promise keepers. I already knew it. I'm just trying to get y'all involved in the service. Uh, I hope you have a letter that has a seal on it. If you don't have one, we've got ushers that are standing right there taking tabs. Uh, and, and just break that and open that up. I want to just mention it. If you didn't get one, it's very important you get one of these. If you'll hold your hand up. Uh, okay. What door did y'all come in? Y'all should always come through this door. And we'll... Oh, okay, okay. Uh, I, I hope you'll take one of these. Uh, we, uh, this is kind of going to be a guideline, I guess you'd say, for the next few months for me. Uh, Joel is going to be teaching through Matthew, which I don't know if you've been enjoying that, but I really am. I mean, I never thought about Christmas in February, but it's, it's really hitting good, you know. I'm, I'm enjoying that, and I, I'm looking forward to that study. He'll be preaching through that, and I'm going to be doing transition. And uh, it doesn't take as much time to do transition as preach through a series of Matthew, so we'll kind of adjust our schedules. But I'm excited about that. I'm excited about transition, and... Uh, that's my job is to kind of help you transition and to think through this. If you look down about the fifth paragraph, uh, right before some questions, you will notice it says, we desire and hope that 100% of you will commit to this transition. That means don't leave, okay? And we know, uh, and we know for you to do that, you will need to understand what is going on. We are going to talk openly. And we hope that you will feel the freedom to ask questions and help us seek answers. Now, if you look down there, just a little lower there, right under that paragraph, I just kind of briefly gave some questions that might be coming to your mind. And did you know none of your questions are uh, out of line? Like, uh, why are we doing this? Uh, or, you know, I, I don't know whatever question you might have. Like, Bill or I... Could you speed this up? I'd like to get you out of here and get somebody in. Uh, why is it going so slow? You could even, I mean, no question or no thought that you have, we are calling on bad thoughts. I don't care what they are. See, we believe if people will become open and honest about what they're thinking, which the vineyard tries to do that, we believe then you're, you're starting to try to buy in. And when people buy in, guess what? then we can grow together. So I, I know it's not easy to buy into things sometimes. Uh, but over the next few weeks, I, I put back here, next few months I should say, I put the dates. And the dates are simply to say, I, I'm not saying this is the most important thing going on at the vineyard, but by the end of this year, we're hoping that we have an incredible celebration. Now, hear me out there. I'll talk a little more of that in the sermon. But the questions are, I've just wondered, 
right now, just off the top of your head, uh, how many of you might have a question that's going on in your mind about transition? You just, you know, you just have a question. You, you just say, yes, I, I have some, I have a question. Anybody, uh, I know if no one holds your hand up, you're, you're liars, but uh, it, it, that's the problem is people are not, won't be honest about some of their thoughts. They just won't be honest. How many have a question though? Okay, Diane has one. Georgia has one. Good, there's two of you. Two women, three women. Uh, uh, got a man, got a man, oh, got a man, yeah. Uh, well, what, let me start, Georgia, what's your question? My question would be, if you have a stated mission, do we have a stated mission statement that something simple? For the, for, we do. And we pr- sounds like we need to show it more often. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. See there? Uh, that, that will help her know where we're going, right? So we need to pull that out and put it up here some and, and help people know that. Uh, because if you don't all know where we're headed, you might not, not ever know when we get there, right? That's good. I'm always curious, though, about my wife. Uh, I should have had a microphone. What, what, what question you got? What am I going to do to Homeworld? Oh, no. <laughs> That's a wishing and dreaming on her part. <laughs> See, even, even though maybe I don't have to prepare a sermon for Sunday, I'll definitely find some reason to go to Starbucks. Oh, I'm meeting somebody there. And you always are. You're always meeting somebody. Minister to people on a full-time basis. See there? That's a good question, I think. Uh, are you saying you should, you should or you think I should start doing it? Or why haven't I been doing it? Or when am I going to start doing it? Okay. Yeah, yes. I'm not going to tell you today. I'm just, I'm just trying to see if you have questions. See, if you've got questions, I am convinced that... We can start answering those questions. And, and actually, uh, I think in these sermons that's coming up, you will actually find some of the answers. We're going to try to, at the end of every service, make our sermons that I teach shorter and try to have a time actually within the service with a microphone that if you have questions, you'll be able to bring them up. I, I, we were thinking about waiting until February to make, make all that happen. And I thought, that's not a good idea because right now is when people need to start buying in. And if you've got this area that there's a problem. Oh, Brad, you had a question. Oh, later. Later, okay. It, it wasn't a good question? Oh, it's a good question. Okay. You want to tell me in private or something? No? Okay. Uh, let me just show you uh, a video here if I can get this to... Uh, uh, if I can get it to go, we, we got some sound, I think. Four years ago, we started to wonder, what would shopping look like if you could walk into a store, grab what you want, and just go? What if we could weave the most advanced machine learning, computer vision, and AI into the very fabric of a store so you never have to wait in line? No lines, no checkouts, no registers. Welcome to Amazon Go. Use the Amazon Go app to enter. Then put away your phone and start shopping. It's really that simple. Take whatever you like. Anything you pick up is automatically added to your virtual cart. If you change your mind about that cupcake, just put it back. Our technology will update your virtual cart automatically. So how does it work? We used computer vision, deep learning algorithms, and sensor fusion, much like you'd find in self-driving cars. We call it Just Walk Out Technology. Once you've got everything you want, you can just go. When you leave, our Just Walk Out Technology adds up your virtual cart and charges your Amazon account. 
your receipt is sent straight to the app, and you can keep going. Amazon Go. No lines, no checkout. No, seriously. Well, you got to go to Seattle uh, if you wanna if you wanna get it. Uh, I'll bet it'll be coming to uh, H-E-B soon, don't you? I think it will. Uh, I don't know how that hits you. When I think of that, I think, I can just see some guy about my age walking over and say, where, where, where's the checkouts? They don't have them. Well, how do you pay for this stuff? Well, you got to have an app. Oh, an app? What's an app? <laughs> you know, people my age, they haven't used apps. I mean, I'd be pulling out my wallet trying to pay cash. Where do you pay cash? Don't take it anymore. It's gone. Oh, oh, well, maybe a credit card. No, don't take credit card either. you got to have an app. You know, i got to think about that. It's going to be a lot of confusion for some of us guys, aren't there? We won't know how to get out of the store. Now, I don't know what you think about that, but... Here's what comes to my mind. Fear, anxiety, some frustration. On the other side, since I'm a guy that kind of likes technology, I'm kind of looking forward to it. It's like, wow, I've got too many credit cards in my billfold anyway. I can narrow it down to just a driver's license. So security. Then I wouldn't have to lose any of those things anymore like I had before. I mean, this is going to be great. I kind of like this. I'm looking forward to it. You know, you know, if I leave my phone at home, that's the only thing I'll, I'll have to go back and get. I'm a long ways out. Do you see what I'm saying, though? There's, there's, everything's involved there, isn't it? Could be exciting, could be fun, how you're looking at it. Uh, but then that anxiety is, I don't know if I want people to know that much about me. That means everything I buy went right into, you know, everybody in the world knows now what I bought. I mean, the whole, I mean, this is incredible scary that's what transition causes it causes you to feel feelings maybe of excitement because some of us really love change we love change i love change on the other side i sometimes have anxiety with change on the other side i'm excited but on the other side i'm fearful and i bounce back and forth and yet here's what's the truth you cannot stop it as a whole. You may try to go to that store in Seattle, which may become your H-E-B store in time. You can try to go and pay cash, but good luck. You're going to starve to death because it's changing. It's moving on. It's happening. And, and we never like to totally embrace certain things, yes. And we may say, no, I never will. Listen, it's how we adapt and use change which is what helps us live life. I like some of the changes over the last seven, uh, 68 years, aren't they, 78? But I'm just 68. I may not look it, but I am. And you know, the truth of it is, I've liked a lot of the change. I love, I love cell phones. I mean, it's incredible just being, your wife can call you just that quick. And again, and again. I get very few calls from y'all. I get texts from everybody else. Diane, it's a phone call. But you know the good thing she's asking me? When are you going to be home for supper? That's the good point, isn't it? See, what I'm saying is you move through this thing, it's, gonna, it's always kind of a challenge. And we want to encourage you to be thinking about being on that team. I think this is an incredible team right here in Brenham that has one mandate, and that is to try to reach every boy and girl, man and woman, in this city for Jesus Christ. Not a very big mandate, just that's our mandate. It really is. And it's, it's our mandate to take them and shepherd them and train them and teach them and, and send people forth again. And when God builds his church and he says, I will, he's building with people just like you. And if you're not on a team, if you're just visiting today, you ought to be on a team. You have to join that team to really, <clears throat> you know, 
until it's passed, we don't know what's in it. But if you, until you come here, you don't know what's in it. Until you come and become a part of a team, then you really don't understand the dynamics, the excitement, the fun. I was just back there through the children's department this morning, and I was just noticing uh, people working back there, the teachers, and uh, <clears throat> just talking to uh, different ones. And I, I thought, wow. Don't, oh, I appreciate these people. I mean, thank you for these people. They're, I mean, Gloria and Sean were back there getting ready, and they were reading their material and looking at everything and preparing for the kids to come. And, and you know, I just thought, wow. This is a wonderful opportunity. This is a great opportunity. And, and I, I, I just thank, you so, thank God so much for people. You know, people are so important, aren't they? Getting to know people are so important. Who, Matt? No, you're too close. I wonder who. I would try Brad, but that might hit Danelle. Oh, there we go. There we go. Jeremy, welcome to the team. I've never got to do that at a football game. If you ever got to do that, I've never got to do that. And I've always wanted to do that. And I've never caught a football. To t- uh, thank you. <laughs> Why did I throw it to Jeremy? You know, the last person I should know to throw was to Jeremy. Okay. You don't like my football? <laughs> How old is Benjamin? To take it home. To Benjamin. Don't throw it back at me. Okay. <laughs> the title today is simply put, God Selects, We Recognize. There's an ABC of that, which I probably won't get into because I'm doing too much time in intro. But selecting, commissioning, establishing is going to all be part of this transition. Selecting. We believe with all of our heart, God selects. We recognize. And so I want to kind of tell you a little bit of how we came to the point that we chose Joel and Danelle to come to this church. In the vineyards, there's this concept. Simply put, you're always looking around to see what the Holy Spirit is doing. I remember being in a conference with John Wimber, the founder of the vineyard. I remember him looking over to the right, and I was my first service with John. And John would say something like, and he's been, really he taught, and it was not a very exciting sermon, kind of boring. And nothing against John. That's, that was, he, he was an intellect, incredible, smart person. And yet, you know, I guess that's why I didn't get much out of it. But he looked over some, at the end, and he said, now let's just be quiet for a while. He so believed in waiting on the Holy Spirit. And, and, and after a while, he might look over the left, right, center. He'd say, I, I want y'all just, just, just to turn and kind of look over in that area. And it was amazing. All of a sudden, you would see people in that area kind of weeping, crying. Just, it just almost looked like God was moving in that area. And I never understood why he didn't move on the whole church at one time. But it, it kind of seems like he'd be, be doing that. And you look over and you say, wow, I, I don't see anything. And then you'd keep watching. And sure enough, that, that area begin, they begin to weep. And that you'd, you'd see the Spirit of God. That's what you call in the vineyard recognizing what God is doing. And then get in on it. it, it in, the, in the business world, that's not how we f- focus mainly. We think we get it all done by effort organization, structure, check out who they are, where they're from, you know, do a deep study of them. And we do all of that stuff in reality. But the truth of it is, all we're trying to do is find out who God is picking, who God is choosing, what God is doing. Now, once we find out what God is doing, we try to get in on it. We try to become a part of it. And so, let me read you a scripture, because sometimes, uh, Diane, I... In the front of my briefcase there, maybe you can or just bring it to me. Uh, I want you to uh, look at this scripture that here. Oh, thank you so much. I have two very important things in here. These are two straws I stole from Starbucks. Okay. That's such a blessing to me, that story is. They gave them to me free. I mean, I'm not kidding you. No, I think I used this one. 
I'm not sure. Uh, Therefore, it is necessary to choose one uh, of the men who have been with us the whole time. Now, sometimes we think of God selecting, and we think of it in a very spiritualized way. You know, it's like we pray and fast for two weeks. That has happened in the Bible. Many times, that's how people were selected or things were done. They prayed and fasted. But sometimes it didn't look near that spiritual. What I'm trying to say is God selects through a multiple style, all different styles. Now, notice here, they're trying to replace Judas. Would you say that's an important position? I mean, one of the apostles, we go down in history as one of God's apostles. I mean, yeah, he says we should study the teachings of the apostles and prophets. And so, yeah, yeah, there'll never be any more apostles. That was it. Okay, so he says here that um, have been with us the whole time the Lord Jesus was living amongst us, beginning from John's baptism to the time when Jesus was taken up from us. For one of these must become a witness with us of the resurrection. So they nominated two men. How do you think they went about that? Probably, they said, Peter, do you know anybody? Mark said, yeah, man, I, I know this one guy named Justice. Well, follow me, do you know anybody? Yeah, I know another guy. And they begin to talk about people. And they probably were saying, you know, let's be praying about this. Because we need, we need to nominate. And then, then it says, uh, they, they, uh, they nominated two. One of them was known as Justice. And I would say the other name, but I can't say it. And then there's Matthias. And then what'd they do? Well, they got the nomination. They're going to have the final vote. So they prayed, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Personally, I think he's talking about the two men's heart. You know everyone's heart. You know which one of these two should be the one we choose. Now, I don't know if you know it, but the Vineyard selects pastors different than any other denomination that I know of. The Vineyard is what we call pastoral-led. It's kind of like the the charismatic movement back in my early days. Like uh, a pastor would go out and start a church. And him and his wife and one person on the board so that they didn't ever lose a vote. And uh, they started churches. But the whole idea there was that many of the churches were traditional churches. And they were actually run by committees or by uh, overseers or by staff and And the vineyard said, no, that's not really how God does it. God usually uses a man. A woman? Yes. Old Testament, we have examples of that. We have in the New Testament examples of that. But usually what we could say, God uses one person to start a work. That's not saying that that I'm important or somebody's important. No, it's just... (laughs) It's kind of hard to believe this, but when God chooses somebody, it's not necessarily because of his looks. Aren't you glad? That's the reason I got in, because of my looks, I guess. Why does God choose somebody? Why does he choose them? Because he knows their heart. And yet sometimes he let the people have who they wanted, and his name was Saul, wasn't it? But God really wanted to choose their king. God wants to always choose the leader. He wants us to recognize that he's choosing because we look on the outside. He looks on the inside. Now, that should help you a lot because you need to know how we come up with Joel and Danelle. What is this? How does this all come about? Well, notice here how they did it. They prayed. Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us these two you have chosen to take over uh, the apostolic ministry, which Judas left to to where he belongs. Nice way of saying he went to hell, I guess. Then they cast lots. Do you know when they did this at another time in the Bible? Jonah. Before they threw him in the ocean, they cast lots. I guess he got the short straw and he was thrown in 
kind of a bum deal, wasn't it? But worked out okay. Worked out okay. Now, the point is, I think these men on the boat were actually saying, we don't know what to do, but we wish God knew something. I mean, we wished he would tell us what to do. They were looking for answers. Now, let's see. No, that's two women. Uh, Eric, could, could you be justice? W- would you mind standing up? Take, let go of his hand. There. You know. uh, Matt, since you're on the front row, I know. You know, you know that's a bad thing. Now, uh, long straw, short straw. Now, you're Matthias. Okay. And uh, so we prayed. God, show us who. Now, uh, I was going to say, uh, you, you look younger, so probably you'd be the best one to pick. You know, I don't know. Maybe that's, yeah. yeah. But I, I don't know. Maybe Justice was the same age. I'm not really sure. Uh, anyway, I'm going to mix these up. Don't look. Okay. Here we go. Who wants to draw first? Young ones first. Uh, no, you can't take that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he got the long straw. He won. Or was it the short straw you're supposed to get? You don't know? Okay. Well, let's do it again then. Okay. So they prayed again. And they said, oh, God, we didn't know for sure how we were going to plan this long straw, short straw. Now we know it's going to be the long straw who wins. Okay. Draw again. You, you're going to defer to him? Hey, good pick. You are the winner. Y'all can have those at home if you want to. Now, did that seem real spiritual? Do you think God could have still been in that? Not in that, but I mean, you know. See how simple it is sometimes? See, sometimes we want to make the kingdom of God so spiritual. And, and sometimes they prayed, it said, and fasted before they made decisions. But the interesting thing is they usually always laid hands on them before they sent them out and that that is a time when we will have at this church and it'll be called commissioning and during that time we will lay our hands on Joel and Danelle and we will commission them as the senior pastor of this church but we're not at not at uh, commissioning yet we're at what we would call selecting and uh, I want to take you to another scripture that's in uh, uh, 1 Samuel 16. And I just want to take your memory back for a moment. Do you remember when uh, Samuel was going to go pick the new leader? God had said, Saul's out. Got to have a new guy coming in. Would you call that transition too? Things weren't working out so well there. So God was going to bring in a new leader. Notice how he did that. He made the decision, Saul's going. Did you actually, do you realize that I mean, that sounds a little hard to take sometimes on my side. But God has made the plans of my departure. Not you, not me. God's made those plans. You know, I don't know about you, but to me, I find it very comforting to know I'm in the hands of God. Now, I know I could probably mess some things up. I could, you know, uh, as we move forward, I could get involved too much and tell you don't believe in Joel because he don't know what he's doing. And, you know, then you need to really fire me you know you need to really do something you see? but the truth of it is as we make the transition well Saul uh, God said to uh, Samuel said Saul's out I'm bringing in a new guy now here's where God looks on the heart man looks on the outside first son of Jesse came by and God said no you know they just kept coming by and God kept saying no 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 they get down to the end of it and Samuel says, I guess I made a mistake, you might say. I, I, that's not in there, but I, I think he must have thought that. I must have made a mistake. I must have missed God. Have you got any more sons? He said, yeah, I just got the little kid. He's about 12 or 13. He's out taking care of the sheep. Bring him in. He was just glad to find there's somebody else. Because he, you know, he was following God's orders. He wasn't there to, to make anybody king. He was there to confirm what God was doing. And Samuel wanted to be in on it. Because he believed in God. And that's where I'm taking you today. Jesse, here's what the scripture says. Uh, Jesse sends for David and David comes. Here's what the Lord said. He said, this is 12 and 13 of chapter 16 of 1 Samuel. Then the Lord said, 
And the Lord said, rise and anoint him. This is the one. Whew. Samuel was excited. He thought, man, I don't want to miss this. I don't want to miss this. I don't want to miss what God's doing. I want to be so a part of where God's going. I want to be in the middle of what God is doing. I want God to take this, not just my generation, but I want him to reach into the next generation and the next generation. I want this to be something that accomplishes the full mission. I don't want to, I want to end well. I want the kingdom to move on. I want it to grow bigger and bigger and more people find Jesus Christ. And I want to do everything I can to support and minister in that circle. And I think we have to look at that and say, wow, David, they, pour, they put the oil on David. But David didn't do anything for years. And once again, that's so, veri uh, so verified in my spirit. Yes, we brought Joel and Danelle in back here. They've been here. They've been around us. And, and for years here, you know, things have been kind of going on. I, I'm, I'm probably saying the word years, but it's been going on a quite a while. And many of you are starting to get used to it. And, you know, I notice when he gets three or four in a row, he's, he's just doing better and better, don't you think? He gets into the mood of it. He gets into the motion of it. He, he becomes the owner of it. And I think God is just laying his spirit on him more and more. And I'm excited about that. Here's what it says that happened that day. And, and this, this could happen in, in the fact when we ordained them a few months ago. And now again we'll lay hands on them and commission them. But it says here. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord came upon David. From that day on. The Spirit. Matter of fact, he gives credit to killing the lion and the bear that the Lord helped him do it. And it, it may have been just simply because of that. How did this all start coming about uh, in this church? Well, I don't know if y'all remember this, but it's been, been ancient years ago. But Dennis uh, was here and he became an associate with me. And uh, I made a list, Dennis, of all the stuff you were doing. He was... He was uh, being the associate pastor at that time. He was celebration leader here. He was uh, treasurer. Uh, he was teaching that class back there. You must not have had a job during those days. <laughs> How could you? And uh, we were giving him a little bit for doing that. And matter of fact, he kind of saved my neck during that time. That was a, really a, a fun time with Dennis as we worked together. But we decided as we were looking, and I, I may get all these facts straight. You can talk to Dennis afterwards. And get them straight. But I, I remember us needing and feeling that uh, we needed to transition. That I was looking pretty old. And it might be time to make a change. You know, I mean, you never know what God's doing exactly. So, but we felt that deeply. We went to a, a transition seminar, conference. And we'd never had one in the vineyard before. And I, I so enjoyed that at Boise. I mean, it was, it was such a, a life-giving feeling of transition. It was not a negative thing. It's not like, get out of the way, somebody's coming in. It was like transition in God's kingdom, in God's timing. And, and we came home with a, a strong desire that we would somehow make transition happen in this church. We kind of mapped out a five-year plan, and we started headed into that. Matter of fact, the first thing, I, of course, I started looking for candidates. You know, if you're going to transition, you might need to find somebody that could be there. Well, one of the first people we ran into was at a conference here was Joel and Danelle. It's funny how God ties everything together. But Terry said, my daughter, oh, I know Janelle. We were in school together in Houston. Oh, I said, that's neat. I'd like to get to know them a little better. Well, that's kind of how things started. And uh, I talked, I, I, I called their pastor because, you know, <laughs> you, you don't take sheep out of a flock without asking the shepherd can i have these people and uh, so i talked to the pastor and he said yeah I, I, I let's talk about that well months went by i didn't hear a thing i began to say god i guess we missed it there i need to look for another candidate and so we we were at a pastor's retreat and we met a young pastor down at galveston oh we really liked him and uh we thought man this that's, this might be the one they were wanting change they they knew about brenham and so we talked well, during that time, I, I met another young man that had served here in a, in a program, a ministry here in this town. 
And somehow he got in touch with us, and he was on Facebook. And so we invited Jeremy and his wife to come down. They were meeting some of our criteria. They, they were vineyard. That was one of our criteria. And uh, just like they were saying, anybody who could take this ap apostolic job had to have seen you. So we looked at our criteria, you know. We, I thought, okay, this is good. Uh, he's a vineyard pastor. Their church was shutting down. He was wanting to... And so we got in touch with Jeremy and his wife and invited them down. They stayed with us about three days and uh, with their kids. We were really tickled when they went back home. But uh, <laughs> no, we fell in love with them. They, they were fantastic. And matter of fact, they're serving right now down in Tyler, not as pastor, but as a lay person involved in that church. And who knows? You know how God works, don't you? He all of a sudden you think ah, they're out of the picture someday. Who knows? You never know when you meet somebody and talk to somebody what God is doing. Isn't that good to know that God is, is orchestrating things? He's bringing things together. Who knows? Jeremy may somebody be back here working under Joel and Danelle. But anyway, we, uh, we just kind of met. But you know, I don't know something about. I don't know if you remember that, if you was here during that time. But somehow, and, and I think this is just God, there was just nobody. Nobody seemed to be saying, yes. It's just like nobody was saying, that's the one or and it just kind of stopped there. And I, I, I went through a lot of trauma because I, I actually, you know, I thought, man, I like them. And it's like, God, but I don't, I don't. It's a funny thing. When you don't hear God say something, there's a, there's a part of you that just says, I got to wait. I got to wait. Now, a lot of time had gone by. Now we're, I heard about the Galveston pastor. and They said, no, he's, he's accepting another call. He's gone. Oh, yes, I thought maybe that was another candidate. That did away with one. Their pastor did not call me back. Nobody seemed to say Jeremy was the one here that we should pick. I mean, it was just like nothing happening there. So actually, I went into a little depression. It's like, oh, God, I'm going to have to stay preaching here until I'm 90. It's, it's just not how we. And you know what? Now, this is months later. His pastor calls me. Said, hey, Villar, are you still thinking about Joel and Danelle? I said, yeah. I mean, it's been quite a while since I talked to you. I just figured maybe you weren't wanting to let go of them or something. I don't know how many months that was, but I think it almost almost six months or it was a quite a long time. Whew, my faith just doesn't do well at that length. I give up. You know what I'm telling you about this morning? I'm telling you about how God wants to put together the future of this church and the future of your life and how he is going to bring together to accomplish that mission. I, one day, we had a lot of meetings. I mean, we started at a Mexican restaurant about halfway. Then he met with us. They came and met with us. And, and then I called their pastor and then... You know, it just kept, oh, there's so many meetings, you got tired of meetings. We analyzed them from every angle, their gifting, you know, all of that. And, and, you know, you're looking at all that and you're saying, God, is this the one? That's what you wanted to hear. I remember one day, and it probably doesn't remain big in, in Dennis's mind or not, but I looked at Dennis one day and I said, I don't know, I was sitting there. I, they were talking about something. I'm just sitting there. All of a sudden, I looked at him and I said, I don't know if you know it, but they're going to be our new pastor. Now, I didn't know why. We wanted somebody young. Oh, y'all, I mean, they're, they're younger than me. I know that, yeah. And, and you know, we, you analyze and you, you have, it, it's kind of like you have a, a perfect. Uh, <laughs> when I think about it, I think, how in the world did I get into this job? Anyway, uh, but you have an image of what you want. You have all of these things. But really what you're wanting to know is, is this what you want, God? You know, sometimes even though you may, even though, even though Samuel may have thought, God, you've picked too young a kid for this. God, you don't, I don't even know anything about this family. Where did they come from? Are they even Jews? You know what I mean? I mean, the questions must have just gone through his mind. But the one thing he knew, God said, arise, anoint him. No more discussion. See, once I figured, once I felt I had heard God. Now, this takes you back just a little bit. 
I know this sounds more like a business meeting, but it is the rest of your life. You see what I'm saying? I mean, I'm not, see, we're not trying to put anything on you. We have been going through all of this and on all of this and all of this, and we've been listening to everybody's ear. We've been, I mean, mouth. We wanted to hear. We wanted to have ear. We wanted to know what people were thinking. But down inside, there was only one person I needed to hear. See, in the vineyard, we believe a church's pastoral run. And until the shepherd hears the voice of God, until he hears God say, this is the one, we don't elect, we don't vote on, but we listen. You hear what I'm saying? We listen to what everybody's saying. We listen. We say, God, are they saying this? Are they saying that? Is this the right one? And you go back because, see, if nobody agreed with Jeremy, I had to go back and say, God, I'm going to have to spend a little more time right here because I kind of thought he was a good one and, and nobody's saying yes with me. And either say yes or no. And after he went home, that just kind of left my mind. What I'm saying is I believe that God selects. And, and that's why the vineyard has become a church that's pastorally led. They don't send out, actually they send congregations out, but they send a man out into an area. And they say, go plant a church. A lot of denominations do that. But usually they're, they're tied to a committee. They're tied to votes and, and that sort of thing. But in the vineyard, we don't. We send out and we start and we say, okay, what am I saying? And once I hear God, I bring it to you. And I'm saying, I hope you understand. And that's why we've had him come lead worship. That's why we've had him preaching. All of that. It isn't so much to verify that he is the one. It is to verify that we feel God has chosen him and we want him to start getting your heart to join the transition. Because without you, we don't have a church. You know that. You know how people vote, don't you? With their feet. People say,